Welcome to the future where the glass is half full and you'll need new glasses, where you'll be jumping from conclusions. The past is known and a new future is born. Never before in history has so much meant so little to so many. AD on the radio. Hey, happy tax day. Uh, how you feeling after having been roughly bent over by Uncle Scam in a fiscal manner without the benefit of lube? How's that working out for you? Uh, here's the thing about tax day. A lot of people don't even register it. A lot of people go, oh, sweet, I'm getting money back. Are you getting money back this year, Travis? I already got money back. See, here's the difference between you and I. I like to give mine up early at the beginning of the year. It's it feels more willing if I do it like not at gunpoint. That way, uh-huh. <laughs> I feel like today, you know, it's not it's kind of a non event to me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I um I do the exact opposite. Yeah, for the second year in a row, <laughs> I probably shouldn't be saying this on the radio. Well, no, I, I I've I've been completely <laughs> above board for the second year in a row. I filed an extension. It happens. <laughs> And I'm sure they're totally fine with that because ultimately they owe me money. But it was just one of those things where I left it late. Like my company, God freaking bless them, a uh, little slow getting me my tax documentation. So I wasn't able to, I, and I do it every single year. I'm like January 1st, I'm just going to beat the rush. I'm going to get it all done. I'm going to get whatever refund I got coming to me and move on with my life. And then, like I said, they're a little slow with the aforementioned documents and just didn't get around to it, and it was one of those things where I know I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I have to gather together from last year as well because, you know, I have, I don't have a ton of write-offs, but I've got some just because, well, um, I built the studio at the house, which means a portion of your, anyways, it's it's a whole big thing, and um, yeah, so for the second year in a row, I did not file uh, taxes, I filed for an extension, which is a done deal. And hopefully I'll get it out of the way soon. But it just, I, tax day was a day for me that like a lot of self-employed people, like when I was a guy in a band, or if you've ever been an entrepreneur, or if you've ever had your own business, or if you've ever been self-employed in any way, you know a different type of pain on tax day. Most people view taxes in the following way. Hey, my check's smaller than it says it should be. I guess that's uh, I guess that's the government taking out what they feel like they need. Oh, well, this has always been happening to me. I'm just going to go on my merry way. Doopy 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 doo. <laughs> well, while we're singing Christmas songs on tax day, I don't entirely know if there's one thing Uncle Sam is not. It's Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, funny. I guess you'd be singing. Hum, 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 hum. I've patriotically paid my taxes. Uh, but when you are self-employed, you remember when tax day rolls around. Oh, man. Taxation is is theft. It really is. It's all my blood, sweat and tears. Well, at least half of it, right around 40 to 50 percent of it getting thrown out the window. For what, I don't necessarily fully understand. And I know our government <laughs> pays people that I don't think should be paid and does things that I don't support, and yet I'm still here taking it. And it's a reminder to be angry. So to me, tax day is a day of accountability. Tax day is a day where I go, okay, we are forking over our hard-earned cash. What are you doing? What are you doing with this? I would like an itemized list. What the hell is going on around here? And it's a healthy thing to be self-employed. Or it's a healthy thing to really look at your check. Look at the difference between the net and the gross at the end of the year. Don't get all happy because you got a refund of like $750. Be angry because they took away 40% of your earnings and wonder where the hell that's going. Tax day should be a reminder to be angry. And so many people, and I'm sure they set it up. I'm sure they set it up like this on purpose. You get that little bit of cash back. You get a couple hundred bucks back, $500, $200, whatever the hell it is. You go, oh man. America's great. It's fantastic. I love tax day. I get money back on tax day. No, you get money taken from you in a manner that a lot of people would say is illegal on tax day. But, you know, that's a little out there. Bottom line is it's tax day. And according to a new survey, almost nobody thinks they should be personally paying more taxes than they already do. 500 Americans were asked this question. Considering what you get from the federal government, do you think you pay more than your fair share of taxes, less than your fair share of taxes, or the right amount? What do you think? Do you think you pay the right amount of taxes, Travis? 
Um, no, no, I, uh, honestly, I, <laughs> honestly, I feel like I don't really take as much from the government as, uh, as I deserve considering what I pay. 6% said they pay less than their fair share. 35% say they pay too much. 33% said it's about right. And 26% said they're not sure. <laughs> uh, it's the, they're not sure part that bothers me the most. This is your money. You should have an opinion on it. And it should be. An opinion of, I want to hold these people accountable for the money they're taking out of my pocket. How am I paying them, yet they make the rules? I don't fully understand this, and I want to question it. That, my friend, should be your attitude on tax day. Real radio. 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 104.1. Where the left and right come together for fundamental truths. AD on the radio, on Twitter at ADSXE. You know, actually, I think when I do my taxes this year, I, I should get... I actually should get money back. It should be something I'm excited for, but I'm not because uh, because of all the reasons we discussed. But I haven't done taxes in a couple of years. I filed extensions for a couple of years and you know had a bunch of different stuff going on. So when I do eventually file, I should get I should get some cash back. And like a lot of the people that I know, especially the ones that I work with in California, I work mostly in two different places, California and Texas and a couple different stations on the East Coast, but mostly California and Texas. And from a tax perspective, these two places could not be more different. California, the taxation is freaking outrageous. It's more than I paid when I lived in England. And you know what you got in England? Free health care. Yeah. Just, you know, like that. You know what it costs to get medication? Things like penicillin, things like antibiotics when you got the flu. Uh, Two pounds fifty. Yeah, that's what it costs. That was all that it cost you. And that was it. There was no billing. There was, here's your two pounds 50 and we're done. There was nothing that could catch up with you and bite you in the ass from a credit perspective. And that was, like I said, paying less taxes than uh, the money that I get paid from the state of California gets taxed at. And all the people I work with in California, um, they all sort of like pay money at the end of the year. Like they all have to fork out some extra cash. I'm like, why do you do that? They're like, we have to, we have kids, you know, like we, we just got to use every penny we possibly can to survive in the state of California. Cause it's completely unlivable. If you're a breeder, I was like, Oh, that's right. Yeah. You have the kids who's schooling. I pay for out of my taxes. Hmm, imagine that. <laughs> There's so many things. There's so many things that get me angry about tax time. <clears throat> Here are some more stats about paying taxes. Travis, you ready for this? Oh, God, it's just going to make me mad. (laughs) You're mad, so you're going to share your anger. Go ahead. Uh, 71% of Americans say they'd already filed their taxes by the beginning of this month. You fall into that category. I do. (laughs) Yes. All special there. Um, 18% had it. The other 11% said they don't have to file this year, I guess, because they haven't made money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 6% or about 1 in 17 people say they usually wait until the night before tax day to file. You ever done that? You ever been one of those last minute procrastinators standing outside like FedEx ready to drop your stuff so it can be postmarked by the right date so you don't get in trouble? I, you know what? I am trying to remember if I've done that. Um, I don't think I have. I think I've turbo taxed on the last night, but uh-huh. I have talked to people who have had to go to the airport post office to get something uh, stamped by the end. By it was by the time they finished, it was closed. You know, the post office, normal post office, was closed and it had to be postmarked by the end of tax day. I personally <clears throat> don't know why people do that because filing an extension is easy. Like I know people want to get their money quicker. But you know what? Like, if you send it the day after tax day, you're still going to get it in two to three weeks. That's how it works. It really doesn't make a difference. And you know what? I I personally enjoy filing an extension where I'm just like, "Mm mm-hmm, yep, I'm going to make you wait and I'm going to make you work. That's what I'm going to do. Like, I don't have many rights as a taxpayer, 
but you know, like I'm gonna, yeah, uh, yeah, no, it just means they get to hold on to my money for that exactly. much longer, you know. So exactly, I mean, but there's been times where I knew I owed them money when I was self-employed, where I was like, I'm gonna make you wait, and I'm gonna make you work. Interestingly enough, when I file an extension and they owe me money, I don't really hear from them too much. Uh, back in the day when I was self-employed and I filed an extension, they came knocking, lickety freaking split, asking where their chunk of change was. It's interesting how that works. Yes, yes, interesting stuff. I used to work making minimum wage, came up to about $200 a week, and then they would take out $50 in taxes. That's a lot of money if you only make $200 a week, man. That's like kicking Wednesday and Thursday in the ass, okay? $50 a week in taxes, man. What do I get for my tax money? Get all the free street light in the world. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, give everybody a candle and give my $50 back. I hate taxes. I hate checks. I hate the fact they put two amounts of money on your check. You know what I mean? It's like, this the money you bust your ass all week for, and this is what you're going to get. Social Security. They should act you if you want to take that. Huh? A man should come to you and just say, Dude, would you like us to save money for you when you get old? No, nah, I want to spend it now. You don't get the money till you're like 65. Meanwhile, the average black man dies at like 42. Chris Rock makes a legitimate point. When I first got my first Californian check, <clears throat> I remember looking at it going, wow, that's strange. I feel like I worked a lot harder than that. And my boss was standing there in front of me. I was like, what the hell is this? Where'd all my money go? And she was like, oh, that's sunshine tax. I was like, sunshine tax? She's like, yeah, that's what you pay for living in a place where it's so beautiful year round. I was like, A, I don't live here year round. B, I'm one of the last great true indoorsmen. Like, I don't like going outdoors. If I promise to stay inside, do I get a break on that? She's like, this is really not how it works. I was like, well, it should be. And like, when I'm in California, it inevitably happens. I work really hard. I work, I do like six separate radio shows a day. A day where I don't go to, where I go to sleep before 4.30 in the morning is a rare thing. So when Saturday rolls around, I like to pass out face down in my living room carpet and do as little as possible. But then inevitably it happens. It happens through the shutters the sun starts peeking in and getting on the television and disturbing my baseball game and i find it deeply disturbing because i'm like oh that's the sunshine i'm being taxed on i'm freaking paying for that all i want to do is stay indoors but now i have to go outside and enjoy it because it's sunshine tax and i'm paying for it so i feel like i need to be out there in it it's garbage i tell you it's freaking garbage For more stimulation and less irritation, 9 out of 10 doctors choose KPRC AM 950. Houston's more stimulating talk radio. Don't get the blues, get all the news, we mean all of you. Guys out there in Radio Land. All aboard! He's back. AD on the radio. Give it up, yeah. So, Travis, you grew up in a somewhat religious household, right? I did, yes. Were you ever party to, or did you ever see one of these things? That, did, did you ever see someone perform an exorcism, or did you ever know someone that <laughs> had an exorcism performed on them? No, no. Um, thankfully, I grew up in a uh, religion, and I say thankfully, I just mean because exorcisms are uh, truthfully a little strange. Thankfully, I grew up in a religion that wasn't to into or known for exorcism <laughs> is there only one sect of cre- like is that mostly a catholic thing i think it's mostly a catholic thing yeah and from my understanding it was something that the catholic church actually had tried to distance itself from well they're really distancing themselves from exorcisms now um but still performing them how is this possible? How can you distance yourself from an exorcism yet perform them at the same time? I hear you ask. Are you asking that, Travis? Is that what you're asking? I am actually asking that. Yes. <laughs> you, you perform exorcisms over the phone. This is now a thing. You're not serious. 
I, I kid you not, my friend. And uh, we'll get into all of this a little later on in the show. Actually, <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss this later on in the show. Did you? Oh, it was a couple of years ago, and I think the priest was in Eastern Europe. I am fairly certain he was a Catholic priest. He kept saying the devil was texting him. Did you, do you no. remember seeing this story? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah it's like Eastern European priest was convinced that the devil was texting him constantly. Like getting, getting BLs a text. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it was just a telemarketer. No. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous, of course. The devil's not texting anyone. He's entirely too busy producing Justin Bieber's next record. But um, we'll discuss exactly how one can perform an exorcism over the phone a little later on. Right now, though, let's take a look at the news. What is going on in the world? Stormy Daniels will appear in an upcoming issue of... Penthouse. Oh, wow. How about that? (laughs) For the people that, you know, haven't seen her naked already all over the internet and feel as though they absolutely must, must, must buy a magazine made out of paper and staples. She's going to be in an upcoming issue of Penthouse. Don't get too excited, though. She's part of a women who drive Trump crazy pictorial that also includes Nancy Pelosi, I believe. So temper your excitement with a little reality there. What else? Uh, Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson have named their baby girl True Thompson. True. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, I'll use it in a sentence. Oh, look, there's True Thompson getting her ass kicked on the playground <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's <sighs> terrible. Yeah, evidently, Chloe borrowed Kim's copy of the big book of bad baby names. So there's that. All right. Well, good for them. True Thompson. Th- th- I'm just trying to think. Is that an okay name? Is it true? It's that. It's not as bad as calling your kid Apple or Stapler or something or whatever the hell this dude. Like true is not entirely terrible, is it? Or, or, or I mean, I, it's kind of my region here. It, it's one of those things that it's truth to be true. Uh, it, it's. I guess all in the eye of the beholder. I mean, people are just kind of making up names at this point. Do you remember the episode of Seinfeld where he wanted to name the kids? Dude, Soda if I have seven? a baby girl, calling the kids seven. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great name. Uh, I feel like we're at that point. It's who am I to tell somebody what they can or can't name their child? I obviously I'm not. Um, I'm not anyone who can tell anyone what they can or can't name their. Y- y- did you know there's certain countries that they have a list of approved names? Really? I, I can't remember which country it is. It's uh, It may be Iceland. I, I'm trying to remember. there, But there are countries that have a list of approved names because they want to keep the names uh, true to their culture. I think there was a white supremacist in America that tried to name their kid something like Adolf Hitler Jones or something like that. And the, and, and, and the government was like, no, <laughs> no, you don't. That's that is hilarious. No. And I, I, I Googled you, you gotta it. You got to give it the kid a fighting chance. No, oh, it's Iceland. Iceland, uh, there's a there's a few countries that have very very strict names. There's like eight countries that have very interesting laws about naming children. Uh, and shockingly, it's um, it's a lot of the um, countries that you'd expect. It looks like uh, Germany, Sweden, Japan, Denmark, Iceland, New Zealand, China, Norway. They, they all have very um, interesting baby naming laws. But I think it's Iceland is the one that I was thinking of. The it's uh, there's an actual list, and it has to be an Icelandic word or something like that. It's very interesting. They, like, what do they disallow? Like, what are you not allowed to call your kid? Because, like, I understand, I, I it's child abuse to give your kid the name like Adolf Hitler Smith or whatever the hell that guy was trying to call his kid a little while. Like, that's just it's you know, it is literally child abuse to do that. So, I get the government stepping in in the good old U.S. of A. here and and saying no you don't um but like what what's not allowed in iceland like, okay what, so what are they not allowing kids to call their uh, parents to call their kids according to the wikipedia page which we all know can be edited by anybody so it's you know uh, cut me some slack on this one uh the icelandic naming committee maintains an official register of approved icelandic given names and governs the introduction of new given names into the culture of iceland it was established in 1991 to determine whether new given names not previously used in iceland were suitable for integration into the country's language and culture 
<laughs> so, like, if you try and name your kid, True. say, Seven, <laughs> yeah. they might be like, that's not actually a name. Don't be stupid. Exactly. They won't allow it. Or, that's not actually a name. Don't be stupid. Exactly. Exactly. You must give them a normal name that everyone will understand, like Scorg or <laughs> Ludifisk. <laughs> So, uh, uh, so apparently, um, the committee refused to allow Blair, B L A E R, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong because I don't speak Icelandic. Um, yeah, the name B L A E R, and the, of course the A and E are connected, which means gentle breeze in Icelandic. They said, um, "What a pretty name!" Yeah, that's not allowed. It, it was gentle breeze isn't allowed. It was not allowed to be registered um, as a female baby name. It could only be used as a man's name. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know. It's, it is crazy. So You're not allowed to call your child Gentle Breeze. Now go do something sensible, like eat rotten herring that's been sitting in petroleum jelly for eight years. <laughs> that, that's an actual Christmas dish. Oh. dish. I, actually, I think that's Norwegian. It's like, have you ever had that? Like, no. Ever hang out with Norwegians around Christmas time? It's like... <laughs> I think it's called Ludafisk, and it's not in petroleum jelly, but it smells like lye. It's like, it's basically fish jello, and it smells like, it's, it, yeah. Uh, here's one for you. The committee refused to accept the names of Duncan and uh, Harriet Cardew, Icelandic-born children of a British father and an Icelandic mother, because their names did not meet the criteria for being added to the registry of approved names. So there you go. Can't be named Duncan in Iceland. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I kind of respect that in a way, you know what I mean? Because I think maintain the culture. One of the one of the things that I noticed when I went to Germany and Austria was that they complained about it a lot, but they seem to have done a much better job at integrating immigrants into their culture. And they do that in a very, very specific way. Like in other parts of the world, America included, it, it was this way for years. If you arrived in America and you were from a different country, they would go, all right, you're going to live in this neighborhood with the rest of the people that come from the country you came from. We're going to create little versions of your countries all over the place. That That's basically what happened when immigrants came to America. Well, what did that do? It led to big chunks of society not speaking the language, not being integrated, not really being interested in being integrated. And and this is not unique to America. This happens all over the world. In places like Germany and Austria, you get there and they go, welcome to Germany, welcome to Austria. You're here now. You will be speaking our language and we are going to, you know, you are going to live wherever the hell you want and you're going to become an Austrian. You're not going to be what you were. You are now an Austrian. You will live in a manner that we live and you are welcome to it. Happy to have you here. And it's just, it's, it's, it's sort of a much firmer and more loving way of integrating people more successfully into society. And I think I, you, you feel it. You feel like less of of that tension in those countries. <laughs> but they're really firm with how they do it. Like the Scandinavian folks, they're really helpful and welcoming. Like I'll never forget being stuck in the airport in Denmark uh, and and not really having anything to do for a while. And first and foremost, everybody speaks English, which is highly embarrassing because you don't speak Danish and you also don't speak German um, and you don't speak Swiss. But anyways, you are... Um, you're you're running around Europe and if you're in the Scandinavian part of your airport journey as I was you walk up to a place to get a sandwich or something and they see the fact that you're not like everybody else i.e. dressed in black you're wearing a baseball hat and some colors and they immediately spot you as an American and be like hi fella how are you could I interest you in a sandwich or something of that nature yeah bro <laughs> go Mets and like that's <laughs> Really, really nice people. In Austria, totally different thing. Like, I remember being there with my dad and being like, hey, uh, duh, okay, um, we want to get on this bus or go into this museum. Excuse me, um, could you help us? I would like to buy two tickets. Say something back to me in German. Ah, gosh, sorry. Um, two, I point at him, I go, two Tickets? Tickets too? Sorry, I don't speak German. They say something back to me in German. And I'm like, 
Is there someone around here that speaks English? Same person? Of course. I speak English. How can I help you? Like, they made me go, do you speak English? Before they would speak to me in English. And they made it very clear that I was there in their country at their pleasure as a guest. And I was welcome to it. And this is how I would best enjoy it. But I was here. And it was their town. And I was going to respect that. And I actually kind of wound up respecting it a little bit more. So, you know what? If you're not going to allow your kid to be called Duncan in Scandinavia, die. Oh, fair enough. It's Scandinavia. You, you, you rolled the dice on that one when you moved there, <laughs> right? English people. Yeah. Uh, I always question, and I've met lots of guys with this name, but why Why do so many Hispanic people name their kid Jesus? Like, <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's funny that you say that, because all joking aside, I do know, I actually know people of Hispanic origin. I, I know I know people who are Mexican named Jesus. However, I don't know a I single know three of them. Yeah. I don't know a single white guy named Jesus though. So I mean yeah. it's very, very interesting. Uh, perhaps they're um uh, I mean I assume that the again, I assume I'm not trying to be funny and I'm not being disparaging. It's just one of those interesting cultural differences. Like we would never call ourselves Jesus. And yeah. And it's interesting as a white guy, um to uh, to meet a, uh, a Hispanic girl who's called white. I've met several Jesuses and at least three Blancas that I know of. I'm like, Blanca means white, right? And like, yeah. They're like, so you're named after the color white? I'm like, uh, I know I know other people that are named Violet or Scarlet, so why not white? But I've yet to meet an American, I've not yet to meet an American called Jesus or white. An American guy <laughs> called Jesus or an American girl called white. It's interesting how this stuff happens in that way. But yeah, if I have a daughter, seven, definitely seven, unless, you know. Unless that kid is born in Iceland, in which case, you know, it's got to be Skorg or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of think uh, I kind of think we might do well with a, a list of approved names when you start to think about it, especially lately. It seems like we're just making names up now. Mm, yeah, no, I think Seven's a good name. I think Seven's a good strong name. Do you do you think about what you would name a kid if you ever had one? No, uh, well, I, I no. There's no way to win because you're constantly asking yourself, "What can I name him that's not going to get his butt kicked?" You know. Yeah, I've got like the name Seven. That's that's obviously kind of a goof. Although I do think it's sort of a pretty name, especially for a girl. I do have a name picked out if I ever have a boy, and I, I don't want to say it because I feel like you're jinxing it. I guess that means I'm really serious about it, right? And if, if I'm like unwilling to say it on the air, then yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder, do you do you have to meet your kid before you give them their name, or can you pick out their name before they're born? I wonder how often that works out. I wonder how many times they go, Oh man, Jesus just doesn't look like a Jesus. We'll have to name them white instead. <laughs> These streets most every day You wait until you get washed away So a little later on in the show, you and I will discuss the new religious practice of exorcism by phone. Yes, this is apparently a thing. Exorcism by phone. (laughs) Uh, I read an article a little while ago about why it wasn't okay to exercise over Skype. Like you couldn't do Skype sessions and things like that, but apparently it is okay to do it over, over the phone. So we'll discuss exactly how a telephone exorcism works a little later on in the show right now, though, bearing in mind that it's tax day, here's, here's another interesting point made by Tim Slagle about educating your kids with regard to taxation in America. Folks, if you have kids, you've got to teach those kids about taxes. 
Best time you can do this is Halloween. <laughs> They're going to be bringing home a nice big bag of what should be take-home candy. <laughs> Miss Halloween, just greet that little tyke at the door. Hey, that's a nice big bag of candy you got there, Harry Potter. <laughs> but first of all, we have to take away this much to ensure you'll have candy in your old age. <laughs> You're going to see it in 50, 60 years. I tell you what, we'll just put that right up here. We won't touch it till then. <laughs> I got to level with you, man. Grandpa's going to eat all that. <laughs> Totally true. You know, um, you know what happened recently, Travis? We came to the end of a ratings period in wow. radio. This is terribly yes. inside baseball. I'm not one of those radio guys that likes to talk about when they hit certain numbers. Like there's some folks that, yeah. And it goes back to folks like Howard Stern doing it. Like we're number one in this, this, and this, and thank you for that. And I do believe in gratitude toward listeners, but not just when, you know, they ratchet you up to number one. So I, I don't ever talk about this sort of stuff on the air, but I will say that my ratings were good enough recently to earn a coveted ratings bonus. Oh, and, um, nice. Yeah, that's, that's very exciting. Have you paid the tax on that yet? Well, no, that's the thing. It was actually pointed out to me by my program director. They're like, you're getting this much, you know, before Uncle Sam takes their cut. <laughs> it's yeah. just like... Yeah, I was like, oh, there goes half my hard work and achievement. And somehow it was just it was that much more insulting to have half of it taken away by Uncle Sam because it wasn't part of my paycheck. It wasn't part. It was like, here's something that you get for doing exceptionally well. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Here, you, you tried really hard and you succeeded. You know, <laughs> like these two things don't usually happen. So um, because you tried hard and succeeded and you've worked really hard for one quarter, you are going to get this fiscal recognition of something that you did that was above and beyond, above and beyond what we usually pay you. And I was like, freaking fantastic. And A, by the time Uncle Scam gets done with it, it's like, oh, fine, I could buy a couple extra sacks of groceries and <laughs> that's pretty much it maybe i could change a tire or something but like um it was that much more insulting it was that much more insulting to have half of it taken away because it was yeah. a bonus and i did, i don't know why there's no logic there's no rhyme or reason to it but i just found it to be extra shisty of our government to do that yeah well it is I, i'll tell you what i'm i'm a pretty i'm a pretty big believer and i don't do it because i I don't want to be the only one. Have you ever noticed? It's, it's funny that the government um, insists on withholding their money from your paycheck because they know that if they just bill you at the end, that they're not going to get it. But I'm a pretty big proponent of the idea that you should have to cut the actual check that one at least once a year. That instead mm -hmm. of you know getting a refund and filing for your refund, you shouldn't get a refund. As much as I love the feeling of a refund, I think you should have to pay the price. Because, it, you know, you really don't notice it, it you know, it, especially me, because I know I'm getting it. But, you know, this time of year comes around and I'm like, oh, great. I'll get a few grand back from the mm -hmm. multiple grand that they took from mm -hmm. me, you know. Oh, no, no. Anybody that has been we've talked about this on the show a couple of times and it's worth keep it's worth continuing to mention anyone that's ever been self-employed or an entrepreneur or an artist or a musician or anything of that nature where. Uncle Scam doesn't tax you at source where you have to go middle of April and cut the government a massive check. It reminds you to stay angry and it reminds you to hold your elected officials accountable. But like the bonus thing that that irked me, that really irked me. And I've gotten bonuses in the past for ratings, but this one really sort of stuck out to me just because it was at a station that hasn't always done, you know, one of the many stations I'm on, but it was at a station that hadn't necessarily always done that great. And it hadn't always necessarily, you know, been worked out in my deal that I get extra 
for when we do well. And I was just like, man, I, I feel like sticking it to Uncle Sam by not doing the work now. Like yeah. I would rather I'd rather get nothing and know that they got nothing and that I didn't have to try put all in all that stinking effort um, for them to just take half of it. I was just like it it yeah, it burned me. It burned me badly. I was I was quite annoyed. Anyways, uh, enough ranting about taxes. But yeah, you're totally right. Everybody should pay taxes once a year, see the money leave their account, feel the pain of it, and then do the appropriate amount of questioning afterwards. Well, let's uh, take a look at what else is going on in the news. Mike, uh, the situation Sorrentino, Vinny and Polly D from Jersey Shore say they've all made a lot of sex tapes. Oh, oh. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th- those guys like <laughs> You know what those guys look like? I they were I think some of the first people to openly do like tons of steroids. You know what I mean? Like yeah. tons of steroids, tons of fake tan, tons of and I, like I remember seeing like the the first time I saw Jersey Shore on TV, I was like these guys are walking around they look like condoms stuffed full of walnuts is what they look like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The idea that those things made, uh, well, uh, on the plus side, if Mike, the situation Sorrentino and Pauly D from Jersey Shore both made a lot of sex tapes. On the plus side, the CIA now has a new torture method for suspected terrorists. And for that, we thank them. Leave the stimulation to the professionals. Everyone is so smart. KBRC, more stimulating talk radio. There's something happening here, and you should know what it is. <laughs> the dumbing up of America. Now, more AD on the radio. <laughs> So telephone exorcisms are apparently a thing because you and I tackle big and important issues around here. We'll get into how that works a little later on in the show. Right now, though, let's continue to roll through what remains of the news. Travis, what else is going on in the world? Earth, Wind, and Fire say they have no problem with Taylor Swift's cover of September. No. Earth and Fire are fine with it. I think Wind said it blows. (laughs) (laughs) Moving swiftly along please (laughs) today is tax day you're right yeah and remember remember without taxes america would collapse unlike now when things are totally smooth sailing (laughs) yes it uh brings to mind the old saying that uh the only certain things in life are death taxes and the kardashians giving their kids really weird names (laughs) today is yeah, t- today's, it's weird, right? The 17th is a weird day to have tax day, or am I making it, I always just feel like it falls on the 15th. Am, am I making that up? No, I, I think it's usually the 15th, I guess, because 15th was a Sunday. I guess they pushed it two days. Oh, right, 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 gotcha. Yeah, today's tax day. Or, you know, as President Trump calls it, Tuesday. <laughs> I you remember when that whole sort of like, hey, Trump hasn't paid taxes in a while thing came up. Yeah. And maybe he paid taxes. Maybe he didn't. You know, there were all sorts of there was all sorts of weird legal jiggery pokery going on at the time. But I remember some really hardcore Trump supporters. And I think this is part of the reason why Trump does so well with certain folks is because he represents a fantasy. I, too, can bang a porn star and not pay taxes. If our president can do this, then I can do this, too. Because I remember him saying, like, I remember someone saying, what do you think? I wasn't even asking the questions. On this show, you and I talk politics. I don't do that in my real life. Oh, like, God, no. Here, it's, it's, it's fine, and I feel like we're productive and we're part of a meaningful dialogue. But I don't. I have this rule. I don't disagree with people online at all about anything, just because life's too freaking short. And that means I certainly don't argue about politics online. And 
unless it's sort of like in a prep meeting for one of these things, I don't bring up politics a whole lot just because, well, A, you know, I have this forum to get it off my chest and I know other people don't and they're sitting there with all sorts of pent up political rage ready to spew out at any moment and I don't want to be... I don't want to be someone that gets in the way of them exercising that particular demon, you know, so I leave that up to other people. But I do remember seeing folks arguing about Trump and one person being like, well, Trump didn't pay taxes. Mm." And they were both Republicans, actually. They were like one was a never Trumper, one was a Trumper. And Trump didn't pay taxes. Mm. And the other one was like, good for him. He knows how to work the system so he doesn't have to do it. And I was just like... (laughs) What's the, what just happened here? I don't know, but I'm backing away slowly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. It's weird how I saw President Trump actually score points for not paying taxes. But you know what? I mean, like, it, I, I, I too fantasize about not paying taxes. I just you yeah. know, have this weird thing where I, I feel obligated to follow the letter of the law until the law gets changed. I know I'm sort of stuck with it, but there you go. All right. What is there a way we could get out of paying taxes? What you were saying that the uh, the dude from the Jersey Shore, the situation, he could be going to jail for like 15, 25 years for not paying taxes. I sure hope so. Uh, yeah, he um, <laughs> he and his brother both <laughs> pled guilty to to tax fraud uh, in January, and now the max sentence that they could get, he could get fifteen years in prison, and his brother could get twenty five. Uh-huh. We both know that they're not going to get that, but that's the max that they could. I hope he gets 15. I, I'm not a huge fan, but, you know, the difference between Trump's not paying taxes and this guy's not paying taxes is that this guy was supposed to pay taxes and Trump finds loopholes where he right. legally doesn't have to pay taxes. I mean, it goes for so many people who have charities, and I hate to say it, but, you know, all these people who have charities, all these athletes, all these famous people... If they weren't getting a tax break, they probably wouldn't be such great people. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be mean about it, but there's a reason that so many people have charities. It, it benefits them in the tax sense. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. I think that I think in, incentivizing good work is a good thing. I, I'm a big believer in what I suppose is called conscious capitalism. But yeah. you know who did this? 50 Cent. 50 Cent. He had this. Remember that Street King energy shot? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, there was some sort of like, each one of them sold, gave a meal to a homeless kid, I think was the deal with that. Awesome. And, and people were like, okay, but you are making a profit off of it. And he was like, of course I'm making a profit off of it. This is conscious capitalism. This is starting a new business model. This is encouraging people to use their dollar to go towards something that is, A, going to give them what they want, and B, help somebody else get something they need, and C, make me some money. And I was like, I have no problem with that. If it, you know, like if he's making money off of it and somebody's getting hopped up on the energy shot that they need and a homeless kid's getting fed, I fail to see the problem with this, and I love the transparency of the situation, you know? But uh, you're right. There's a lot of people who uh who fly the virtuous flag and really what they should be flying is the tax write-off flag but there you go yeah nothing wrong with it so what what did the situation guy do like how he committed tax fraud what did he do uh they're accused of (laughs) they're accused of not paying all their federal income tax owed on michael's 8.9 million dollar income from 2010 to 2012 and the government also alleges. Yeah, I just realized. I uh, I I don't know if I don't know if he was his manager during that time, but I I know the situation's manager. Oh God. Oh, I hope it wasn't during that time. <laughs> he was just a buddy of mine that used to work at MTV. <laughs> like he <laughs> and he wound up being his manager. I wonder why. Uh, hold on, let me see. Oh, oh God. On. He's still on Facebook, so. <laughs> And he seems to have posted recently, so he's not in the pokey. Well, so that's I guess great. He's not, not well, the implicated. sentencing hasn't happened yet, but uh, so there's still time. But but right, um, right. I think they're just going after these two. They also allege that um, that they deposited cash into different bank accounts to avoid reporting income to the IRS, and that they inflated their business expenses for high end cars and clothing. So interesting. 
the suit was filed against him in uh, in 2014. They re- initially rejected a plea deal, and um, in January they finally agreed to it. So I don't see anything that says where sentencing is when sentencing is going to happen. But here's to hoping they get the maximum. Like designer clothes and high end cars, like. I've never read it, but a buddy of mine swears by it. Um, what's that guy, that rich dad, poor dad guy, the Robert Kiyosaki dude? You know, he's sort of I like the fiscal yeah. motivational speaker dude. I, I don't know anything about him, but I do remember my buddy saying, well, I read Robert Kiyosaki's book and I'm going to incorporate. And that means um, I declare very little income and everything's going to be a business expense. Like my, my car is going to be a company car and, you know, everything is oh, yeah. company stuff. And, and, um, Kind of sounds like <laughs> what the situation tried to do was that on steroids, <laughs> like which is apropos. I, I'm sure it's a great way to do things. You just have to be honest about it. <laughs> well, I remember when I was in a band, like they're like you can get haircuts written off and clothes and all this sort of stuff, and but you, there was there were limits, you know. Like, are you getting a haircut because you're going on tour, or you got a photo shoot, or you got whatever? Are you buying these clothes because you're going to wear them on stage? Are you know like you had to really be able to get behind if you were actually going to use this stuff as a write off, and if you were going to charge it to the company as opposed to saying it was yours. Um, there had to be a real legitimate connection to your business. And they're like, they come after musicians all the time, so just make sure it's legit and keep receipts. So I had a shoebox full of, of business receipts and, uh, and and very strict rules about how you do that. It sounds like he just kind of got the notion that he could do this stuff and was just a freaking idiot about it. Although depositing money into a different bank account, to, why... you? There's only one place you can hide money. That's like in your fridge or under your mattress or something like that if you're a drug dealer and deal exclusively in cash. How could he have been under the impression that depositing money into a bank account was going to help hide it? Like, it's so, I don't know. I don't know anything about hiding or laundering or fraud or anything, but it sounds like he went about it in a really, really stupid and uninformed kind of way. Yeah. Yeah, well, it looks like uh, sentencing is going to happen this month. It looks like per the plea deal, he could be in prison up to five years, and his brother may get up to three per the plea deal. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Wow. Yeah. All of a sudden, I kind of want to watch the reboot of Jersey Shore to see if they're asking him about that. Be like, yo, stupid, what were you thinking? Yeah, he says that he uh, he's dealing with it on the reboot. I guess he did some uh, interview with Jenny McCarthy on uh, on some serious XM show. Interesting. Oh, right on. Yeah. (laughs) One more piece of news. Okay, one more piece of news. West Virginia is the state with the lowest tax burden in the United States. Oh, no kidding. Much of it, I think, due to the fact that many residents take advantage of the home meth lab deduction. There you go. Good for them. (laughs) How fiscally conservative (laughs) of them. So, yeah, telecommuting. It's an interesting uh, legal loophole when it comes to claiming back things on your taxes. If you're working from home, you get to claim like phone lines and cable and, and internet and whatnot. And also, when you telecommute, you can perform exorcisms over the phone if you're a priest. <laughs> it's getting way more popular. Apparently, the newest people working remotely are priests performing exorcisms. And um, yeah, apparently this does have something to do with Catholicism. Which is interesting because I'd read that the Catholic Church refused to do exorcisms over Skype. But I think that had to do with the danger of it. They said that the person being exercised could grab the laptop and throw it across the room. <laughs> like that, that was actually the concern. Um, according. <laughs> okay, now strap yourself down. <laughs> let, me know, let me know when you're strapped down. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of the spirit of Internet Explorer compels you. Oh my God! Uh, according to the Catholic Church, there's been a big rise in demonic possessions lately. I don't know why it's funny because I really I don't disrespect other people's religions, but I just I think I, I can't help it. Hearing that there's been a big rise in demonic possessions makes me laugh. So priests are handling the situation remotely because they simply can't get to all the exorcisms in person. And yeah, apparently if you say the correct prayers and perform all the rituals over the phone, 
it's just as effective as being there to cast out the demons. Plus, you know, you don't have to worry about the dry cleaning bill for a green vomit on your robe. So it's a giant win-win for the Catholic Church. Yeah. Exorcisms by phone. If someone asked you to participate in an exorcism, would you do it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, for two important reasons. One, I'd really want to see it. Two, if it was that important to them that they asked me, I'd want to help. You know what I mean? Like, I, me personally, and I'm not, you know, sort of insulting anybody else's beliefs, but I don't believe in demonic possession. So I wouldn't be concerned, but I would want to help them with their concern. And then also, like I said, I'd really want to see it up close and personal. <laughs> Although, um, I can confidently say that Satan is in the IRS today and uh, has been for a long, long time. So if you're trying to cast him out of a five-year-old kid over the phone, you're barking up the wrong tree. Not today, Satan. Not today. Not today.